you very much, uh, Lim, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to be with you uh, here. This is not the first time I'm speaking from this place, and uh, I always enjoy to come to Ireland and um, uh, to uh, discuss energy policy is, uh, is a real pleasure, especially after the explanation given by Dermot about the progress made by the East-West Interconnector, where the EU has put 110 millions uh, to support uh, this uh, project uh, from the uh, European uh, uh, Recovery Program for Energy. So I think it's, uh, if it is a success, and we hope to see it uh, as a success in September this year, I think that's, uh, that's great. It's a great venture between a country like Ireland and the European Union, and I think that's uh, exactly what we need to show also to our citizens, to show how there is added value in the European Union work. And of course, it is not in this house that I have to plead for that, because that is the main aim of this uh, institute. So uh, I will try to uh, give you some, um, uh, well, OK, some idea about uh, what's happening in Brussels at the moment, the field of energy, and particularly how uh, we want to implement uh, this uh, famous internal energy market, uh, which we are trying to build, by the way, for uh, more than 20 years. Uh, you know that uh, we had a very nice uh, ambition uh, led by Jacques Delors uh, in the late 80s uh, to complete the internal market by 92. So that is exactly 20 years ago. And um, I have had the pleasure to work for the Commission for 25 years and to deal with network industry. And I have to say that the network industries are the, more, the most reluctant to go uh, towards the uh, goal of the single uh, European market. And this is true for uh, railway, this is true for uh, energy, this was true so for telecommunications, but technologies have made them without frontiers, I think. Uh, and um, so we are still struggling with uh, these network industries, particularly with energy, after three packages of legislation, we are still there. So it's clear that we have not yet completely masterized uh, this whole process there where we have um, of course, a major ambition uh, which is uh, above the ambition of creating the single internal market, that is to uh, move to a low carbon economy, because that is really where uh, the Europe has uh, decided to, to be a uh, leader in uh, going towards a low carbon economy. And um, we need uh, to bring so many changes uh, across the value chain and uh, that um, this is a real challenge, and uh, you see that this challenge, we are trying also to, to promote it at the international level uh, with uh, some difficulty. So uh, this is, of course, uh, um, leading to repercussions on our ability to deliver at the European level, because there is also a lot of resistance if Europe is to go alone. That uh, is it worse uh, for 10% of the uh, world emissions to uh, uh, to do all these efforts, but uh, we believe that uh, it's worth to do these efforts because it should give us also a competitive advantage at the end. But uh, not everybody is convinced about that, uh, and um, uh, we need indeed to, to show that it ca can work. So energy is at the core of this program of uh, moving to a low carbon, uh, low carbon uh, economy. And um, you see that um, uh, when we are dealing with energy, we have um, all these segments in the uh, energy sector where we have a different approach. And uh, uh, you see that generation normally is a competitive activity. But if you look at all the subsidies which are given to uh, a number of, um, uh, of uh, fuels in this uh, generation sector, uh, you, you wonder whether you have a, a level playing field. Uh, trading is the wholesale market where clearly the third package is, is uh, uh, um, making a lot of progress, and there we see a lot of progress in the wholesale market. Transmission and distribution are uh, regulated business, and we are regulating at the European level, particularly transmission, because transmission is uh, usually long-distance transport, while distribution is uh, left a bit aside. And I think that uh, distribution will become more and more important, especially in uh, view of the uh, rollout of uh, smart grids which are not dealing only with distribution, but uh, with the whole chain, because we need to create a new uh, exchange uh, pattern between uh, all these segments with uh, the smart grids. Uh, and then we have the supply where also there is competition. But um, 
So we are trying indeed to master all this process and to have clear rules. And uh, this is um, uh, what it is about. And um, of course, we are struggling uh, with for all this for, for a number of, um, of years. And I think that we will make progress in the coming years because we have no choice. Our heads of state and government, they've said, uh, you need to complete the internal energy market by 2014. So um, going to uh, Ireland, uh, we see that um, uh, electricity supply and demand in Ireland is, um, uh, of course, a bit contrasted because of the economic crisis. So uh, you may have the impression that you are comfortable because you have uh, had a fall in demand because of the economic crisis, or maybe also because of the mild weather. Uh, although you have had uh, some peaks with cold winter recently, and you have ambitious targets. I think these targets there are quite ambitious. 16% of uh, renewables uh, in your energy mix by 2020, uh, that is in eight years' time, where you are at the moment at 6%, I think, something like that. While in electricity, uh, 40% would mean uh, doubling from the 20% you have today. And I've seen today you are just having 20% from renewable from uh, the air grid uh, table. And um, you have indeed already a lot of uh, installed wind capacity. Uh, and um, you have uh, there, of course, a uh, projection of increase of consumption, which uh, means if you have to uh, match that with uh, more renewables, uh, you have clearly a number of challenges to address. And the uh, challenge there will be uh, in terms of investments. And you see here a comparison of um, the investment needs in terms of electricity networks. And uh, you see that for Ireland, we have plus 230% uh, in terms of um, investments uh, to come. And uh, this is from a study made by Roland Berger uh, to prepare our uh, infrastructure uh, package. And I think this is showing the challenge you have. So you need investments, and you need to secure these investments uh, but uh, there are other countries which have uh, much more to do than you. So there are some who have to increase by 300% their level of investment. So, but we know that the, in the European Union in general, there is a need for a major step change in the, uh, the investments to be done in comparison over the last 10 years uh, for the next 10 years. Now, that is why the Commission has proposed um, a uh, infrastructure regulation which is uh, to replace the present decision on the Trans-European Network for Energy. And uh, there we have looked at the uh, priorities for uh, Europe uh, in terms of electricity and gas and also uh, on CO2 transport and some oil aspects. But uh, here I just look at um, uh, electricity and uh, we have a number of priorities in the field of electricity at the European level. First one is the Baltic Energy Market uh, Interconnection Plan, dealing with uh, the Baltic states and all the countries around the Baltic Sea. We have the North South Interconnections in Western Europe, uh, where we may uh, see also uh, uh, Ireland uh, as part of it, uh, and the North South Interconnections in Central and Southeastern Europe, Europe which is going from pa po Poland to uh, the Adriatic Sea. And then, of course, we have the Northern Sea's offshore grid. The S after C is important, as you know, uh, because um, this is uh, covering um, uh, clearly the uh, sea surrounding Ireland. And it was an express recommendation of Ireland to add the S to the C. So uh, you are fully part of this major project of the uh, Northern Sea's offshore grid, which is gathering nine member states plus Norway. Uh, and then we have some... Um, uh, horizontal uh, priorities, which are the smart grids and the electricity highway. So we have regional priorities there, which may involve a lot of member states and even uh, neighboring countries like Norway. Uh, and um, this is also rather flexible because if there is a need to enlarge these groups for, for obvious reasons, we will do it. And um, we have, of course, priorities which are covering the whole European Union and beyond uh, smart grids, particularly the European Union, electricity highways, there we are going from the far north uh, Europe uh, up to southern Mediterranean, and you have heard about a project like Desertec, and, uh, which is um, 
aiming at bringing uh, solar uh, energy from the Sahara to uh, the uh, European Union. Well, a long-term project, I think, but uh, maybe Daniel will speak about the electricity highways and what uh, NSOE is doing uh, in this field. But these are our priorities, uh, which does not mean uh, we have identified the specific projects there. And um, this will be done later on uh, uh, in regional groups which will, uh, we, we will set up uh, this year, uh, basing ourselves on what is existing, I don't know, Sea or Shore Grid and other regional groups, and uh, to identify projects of common interest. Uh, now, I would like also to have a, a look at um, the 2050 roadmap, which um, the Commission has um, tabled in um, December, and which is now subject of um, scrutiny by the European Parliament and the Council. Uh, and the conclusions uh, by the Council are expected in June this year. So what does it say? Uh, this uh, roadmap, of course, is just uh, an exercise to see uh, what uh, kind of things could happen uh, if we uh, uh, have uh, some scenarios there uh, occurring. Uh, this is not forecast. The roadmap is not forecast. We are working with different scenarios to see the sensitivity and the difference between these scenarios, and we have looked at what would happen with uh, current pol policy initiatives, uh, what would happen if we have high energy efficiency, or whether we have diversified supply technologies like carbon capture and storage, or high renewables, or delayed carbon capture and storage, or low nuclear. So all these scenarios uh, show us that uh, uh, by 2050, in any case, we'll need more electricity. So that is uh, the result of all the scenarios, we will have more electricity in the energy mix, and we will have more renewables, and we'll need more energy efficiency. So that is the mantra for the, the next 40 years, uh, and um, that can lead to what we call no regret action. Uh, that is, um, uh, we need to know today where to invest and what to do uh, if we want to meet uh, these uh, uh, conclusions, and um, clearly, uh, the well-functioning internal energy market is absolutely key if we want to reap these uh, objectives of uh, having more renewables and being more efficient. It is the internal market which should deliver these goods. And um, we need to invest more in infrastructure. That is quite clear. If you have more renewables, you need more infrastructure uh, for transmission of uh, uh, the electricity and probably also in the distribution uh, level. And um, energy efficiency, in any case, is always a no-regret action, So, because the energy you do not consume is the best energy. So that is quite clear, I think, for everybody. Now, uh, we have uh, the, uh, another mantra on our table, which is the European Council conclusions. The internal market should be completed by 2014, uh, so as to allow free flow of uh, gas and electricity. Uh, this uh, should uh, be based on market coupling and uh, flow-based market coupling and uh, also on guidelines and network codes uh, to, uh, to guide uh, and, well, to be binding also on the TSOs uh, uh, across Europe. And um, uh, we think that um, uh, completing the internal market, as I say, will indeed help us to meet our greenhouse gas emission uh, targets more efficiently. Uh, it will also, uh, it should bring benefits uh, to the consumers, which is something uh, where we have uh, to work hard uh, to also to show the benefits of uh, the internal market for the consumers. There are so many components in the price of uh, energy uh, for the end consumer that uh, I think the consumer today does not realize necessarily that uh, the internal market is bringing him benefits. But um, I think that if you look at the, the price of the commodity, it has been very stable thanks to the additional efficiency brought by the uh, internal energy market up to now. But uh, you have a lot of other things like taxes and so on, which are making the price uh, looking higher than it should be. And of course, we do not master the, ga the gas price, which is uh, um, indexed on uh, oil price. So that is, of course, uh, there a clear uh, issue uh, we, we are aware of. And, um, of course, we need to uh, also to try to reduce the price vol volatility uh, to the benefit of both investors and consumers. So I think there we have a clear 
uh, ambition and objectives set by the European Council, which will be monitored by the European Council each time the European Council is meeting. Uh, this is a feature also uh, of the European Union. Energy is discussed by the heads of, un uh, of state and government at uh, each of their uh, meetings. And I think that is showing how energy is uh, seen as an important component of the uh, European policy. Um, so we have uh, this ambition, and I should say also that uh, we have to remove energy islands by 2015. Uh, whether Ireland and UK are still energy islands in uh, the European Union uh, may be uh, discussed, of course, but uh, I think we see also this uh, ambition of um, uh, removing the energy islands, so bringing the energy islands into the uh, European market is an ambition uh, for 2015, very short uh, time to create more interconnections. What we have done already in, in gas, particularly after we had the gas crisis in January 2009, which led to, to create more interconnections. Uh, and where we have also you now market coupling in the central Western Europe and the Nordic uh, states, where we do not see any more adverse flows. So that's, uh, I think, a very important uh, consequence. <coughs> then uh, we have, of course, to implement the uh, second and the third internal market package. I regret, of course, that uh, last Friday we had to bring uh, UK and Ireland to the Court of Justice uh, for not implementing the uh, second uh, package uh, and the third package by the same uh, uh, token uh, for uh, not using properly the uh, gas pipelines uh, between Northern Ireland and uh, Ireland and uh, also between Scotland and Northern Ireland uh, where the capacity according to us is not uh, allocated properly and, uh, and the, the use could be improved and for the benefit of everybody. But um, I hope that we will see an arrangement there which will uh, enable us to remove the uh, referral to the Court of Justice which has been decided last Friday. Uh, so this is an issue, of course. Implementing uh, all the legislation is a big issue. Uh, we have uh, a lot of infringement procedures going on still on the second package. Uh, but we have also now transposition of the third package coming in. And um, we hope that um, the rules will, be, will become clear and create a level playing field for everybody. So this is about market access, independent regulations. Very important for us that the regulators may act independently. Uh, unbundling, well, another important issue because we want to have clear roles and responsibilities for the manager of infrastructure, independent from any producer. I think an issue also in this country. And network codes, uh, this is uh, something Daniel will develop, I think. And that means there is a lot of work. And uh, I just show you this uh, Gantt chart showing all what is going on at the moment and what we have to do by 2014. Don't try to read it, just to give you an idea that it's very important. So I, uh, that will be explained by Daniel Dobini uh, better than I can do uh, on what it means in terms of uh, uh, creating the electricity market according to the target model which had been uh, agreed in uh, the Florence uh, uh, Forum. And um, so this is an example of uh, what can be reached with... Um, uh, flow-based uh, market coupling, as we see uh, in the interconnector utilization between uh, Germany and Netherlands. And I think this is showing that a much better use of the interconnector uh, with the market coupling. Uh, and then the target model to be implemented, I think this is uh, showing you what has to be uh, followed to uh, achieve that. Uh, at the end, we want to have network codes which are binding on all the uh, the users, and uh, this will mean, of course, a lot of work to be uh, development by ENSO. Then um, uh, ACER uh, coming in, the agency, and then the comitology with the member states. So we have always these uh, three logi of um, uh, the TSOs, the regulators, and the uh, member states uh, to, uh, uh, to agree on the network codes, which will be the binding rules uh, for the market uh, later on. So this is a huge work uh, which we, we have to do in the, the next uh, uh, two years. Then we have, of course, to ensure the, uh, the uh, harmony of uh, SEM, that is uh, your market and the internal uh, market at the European level. I don't want to enter into all the details there, but um, there was a consultation paper last week you mentioned 
And I think we will look at that and see whether uh, we may uh, indeed uh, bring uh, f uh, forward uh, both uh, systems together so that um, this will be uh, fully in harmony. And uh, for the future, and I finish here, Chairman, uh, we will see more and more, of course, cross-border impacts of national decisions on energy mix or security of supply aims. Clearly, the German decision to phase out nuclear very rapidly this year has been a wake-up call for all the member states, showing that any national decision has major impact on the neighbors. And the question is, should such national decision be taken uh, without uh, preliminary consultation with the neighbors to assess the consequences? And um, this is uh, something which will be done through the Electricity Coordination Group, which has been uh, set up recently, where we have the member states, the regulators, and, and so to discuss uh, this. And then, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, to uh, go towards 2050 and to integrate our system much better, as uh, said, and to ensure full participation of all consumers. Small-scale energy producers, I think we see that. You know that in France, there is already one million consumers already producing their energy one way or another by themselves. This is a new challenge which we have to tackle. And we have also uh, to ensure that uh, when there are subsidies, they are made uh, uh, again against a coherent European approach. This is very important, I think, because otherwise we have a problem of level playing field in a more and more interconnected uh, network. So a lot of challenges, but I think the good news is that everybody is behind it and working towards the goal. Thank you very much for your attention.